like this look, huh? Got a little bit of that slab look going here. Yeah, more and more people are loving this. I saw this at a store and I figured I'd grab it to give me some inspiration, but this is a live edge. You mm -hmm. can see right here the bark has been removed. Yeah, and not a single slab. You can tell it's actually been pieced together, but it gives that feel and it's nice and beefy. Right. But I like the fact that they put some metal legs in it to give her a contemporary feel. So this is the inspiration for this our project? This is the inspiration, but I'd like to build something a little narrower, mm -hmm. but taller, like a console table. Okay. So I went to my local mill and I I asked the guy for a couple of pieces. I didn't want a big, wide piece. Number one, it's heavy, hard to move around. But the other reason is, is over time, they may have a little twist or a warp to them, and it takes a lot of work to take that out. Right. So by having a couple of narrow pieces, they were pretty flat, which is good. This is maple, and if you look at it, this was cut from the same tree. You can see how the bark lines up. There's yep. a couple of pieces taken off here. But the interesting thing is, because this is cut in order, when I open it up like a book, you can see the grain is a book match. So you've got this nub and a mirror image of it right there. Right. This sort of Y shape is here and it's again here. That's the matching. Exactly. Okay. okay. Something so, to play with. A couple of options that I like to think about here is do I want a book match? Also, how do I want the live edge to be? Do I want the angle up or do I want the angle down? So we're going to give it two straight edges because you want to glue them together. Two yep. straight edges keep two live edges. Exactly, and okay. we also, once by one we did cut one, we have to decide on how wide we want the table to be. So it gives us a lot of options by having two pieces. Have you decided? Uh, well, I've been looking here and there, flipping it around. I do like, I, I like this live edge angle here. Okay. Uh, well, let's try it, try it that try way and this that. way. Like yep. that. So there's, there's one way right there. Like that? Uh, I th yeah, I kind of think so. So if we take that, hold that a little tighter. Yeah, that might that might work. So first step is what? Let's make a straight edge and then put them together again and see how much we want to cut out the other one. Get to this one. Slide that one right under. Cut this and put it together and see what we think. All right, what do you think? I think that's a pretty good size. I agree. Yeah. All right, so now we have to attack the live edge. Now, I found that just by going after it with a chisel and then sanding it afterwards works pretty good. Yeah, because we want a live edge, but we don't want the bark. No, if you leave the bark over time when it's in the house, the heat from the house is really going to dry the wood out and this is going to fall off and be really messy. There's a pretty definitive line between where the bark oh, yeah. stops and the hardwood starts. You find that sweet spot and it just kind of like separates. Like picking a scab. Yeah. I also want to deal with this right here. Looks like they took the chainsaw and cut it off when they cut the tree down. So I think we can cut this and make our own live looking edge right here. All right, we chiseled off the bark and I think we can clean it up with a grinder and then after I do that, you can go after it with the sander. I think we'll give it another sand once we get the boards glued together. So that's the next thing we need to do. It's pretty good right there. Good. Okay, Tommy, glue is dried. What do you think? Joint looks pretty good. It's a little uneven, but we're going to have to really sand the top quite a bit anyway, so we'll make that flush. Next thing I want to do is just cut this off right here and make this even.
All right, Tommy, I know we're going for the rustic look, so I left some of these imperfections here. I'm sure you're okay with that? Yeah, I am, and I like the fact that it's not absolutely, absolutely level. We have a little divot here, and I can feel some high spots right here. That's great. Now, the problem is, is we're going to use these legs right here. These are off-the-shelf metal legs, all right? Now, the height of these legs are all be equal. So if I put the legs on the underside of this table, this is what's going to happen. This Same. wobbles now. With the legs on, it's going to continue to wobble. Exactly. I'm going to show you how to fix that. We've taken our top, put it on the table, upside down. On each side of it, we've installed these rails that we've made straight and equal in height. Now, we've also put a couple of shims underneath the top on each end to bring it up as close to the top as we can because we're going to run a router across the top on our two pieces of guide. So this will flatten it, right? Because this is perfectly flat and that's perfectly flat. Right, and we could take the router and go back and forth and take off sections to make the whole thing flat. That's going to take a lot of time and I don't really care that the underside isn't flat. All right, I only care about the sections where the legs are going to go, right. like right here. So if I trace where this one's going to go, you want to position that one kind of like eyeball right there. Looks good. So now I'll just trace this. Trace that one. All right, we have our board into position. Now the next thing I want to do is figure out the depth that I want to set our router. So I'm going to start right here and I'll drop it down till it touches the wood. I'll take it over, see how it is on this one. That's not hitting there, so that's a little lower. I'll go down to that one. We'll check it over here. Essentially trying to find the lowest spot on this. Uh... Yes, the, f the furthest spot down from the top of our filler. Yep. So we're going to take off looks like about an eighth of an inch and we'll start right here like we'll sit nice. right there and that's sitting nice and flat All right, for our finish, we're going to use a tongue oil, but the tongue oil won't give the maple any color and it won't seal it. So what we're going to do is seal it first with an amber color shellac. Our shellac is dried and now I'm going to take some 320 paper and sand it lightly. Now we'll just wipe on some tongue oil. Oh yeah, Tommy, that is starting to look great. I like the mix between the modern legs and the rustic top, and I think you nailed that finish. Yeah, That's the finish beautiful. is nice. I, I've got about three coats of tongue oil. I'm gonna wait for it to dry overnight, and I'm gonna put about three or four hey. more on tomorrow. Hey guys. That's Watch out, awesome. it's wet. <laughs> Tom, absolutely beautiful color. It's yeah, gorgeous. Thanks. thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.